Well, I have a little bit of an announcement. I'm going to learn Rust. No, no, not that Rust, you already know. This Rust. Rust, a memory-safe compiled programming language that delivers high-level simplicity with low-level performance. I've never touched it, as a matter of fact. I've only read a few things about it, like really how it compares to Java. So why am I learning it? For one reason and one reason only, advent of code. I've never done advent of code, believe it or not, so this year will be my first, and I'm really looking forward to it. So when I was doing some research about, you know, what languages do people typically use, I guess whatever language you're best at, you can figure out how to get it done, but I did want to try something new. And according to this unofficial survey, Rust is the second most popular for advent of code, behind only Python. And I don't want to use Python, so I'm learning Rust. And not that I'm looking for another job, but in case you clicked on this video kind of, you know, expecting me to say something along those lines, as far as I know, Rust is a great programming language for folks who want to get a job. Wasn't it like pretty popular in the Stack Overflow developer survey? Most popular languages, Rust is, um, well, down here. That's not too bad at 12.6%. So no, in professional development, it's not JavaScript. It's not Java or C Sharp or TypeScript or Python. It is down here. Oh, but Rust continues to be the most admired programming language with an 83% score this year. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, if you want to learn Rust, check the jobs in your area and see if they have Rust development positions. If that's, I mean, if your sole goal is to get a job, if you just want to make cool stuff, eh, well, learn it. But now I have to decide how I want to learn Rust. And I'm sure many will say, well, advent of code. That's a great way to learn a new language. And yeah, I do understand that. And I will utilize advent of code to further learn Rust, but I really want to build foundational knowledge to go into advent of code. So at least I have, you know, I understand all the basics and I can reference things a bit easier. You know, I, I need to put in a week or so. I mean, that's really all the time I have, right? About a week or so in diving into Rust, the Rust book, the Rust by example, maybe build a little CLI tool here or something along those lines, whatever I can get done in that seven days, which I know I won't be able to read the entire book, but I just mean like some sections. And then I can uh, hop into Advent of Code with a bit more confidence. And of course, if you're curious, I am going to be recording, documenting the entire process, the entire learning process, and make a video about it. So right now I'm just talking about how I think I'm going to learn Rust, whereas the video will show you how I'm actually going to learn Rust. So there's that. And don't get me wrong, when I say learn Rust, I'm still going to be absolutely garbage at Rust after the first week, no pun intended, but I'll know a lot more about Rust than I know now. That right there is just to stifle any expectation if you think I'm going to be a Rust pro after a week or anything like that. No, I honestly don't even know how much I'm going to learn in a week because I've never actually learned a programming language, a new programming language quite like this, where I'm like, I want to learn it as efficient and intentional as possible, enjoyably efficient, because I still want it to be enjoyable. I'd rather learn less over the course of a week and enjoy the process than try to cram as much as I can in my head and be miserable. But when I learn a new programming language, I typically just build a handful of projects over the course or a really in-depth project over the course of, of maybe a few months, maybe even a year or two, if I'm just kind of doing it a little bit here and there in my off time, you know, it's not really a priority. It's just because I wanted to build something and that was a language I decided to do it. So really where I'm trying to do two things at once, build something that I want to build while also learning the programming language that I'm using to build it. And then over the course of those few months, I'll interact with the documentation and read a handful of it throughout the way so I actually understand what I'm implementing. And then I'll have more touches and interactions with what other people have to say about that language or about this library or about this framework or whatever that I'm using. That's typically how I go about it, not let's see how much I can get done in a week. So it'll be interesting to see for me. And what I said earlier, I think that's exactly how I'm going to do it. And please, if you have any minor changes or recommendations on this learning path, I'm all ears. But my plan is I'm going to read through the beginning portions of this book because I've already kind of skimmed through it and I know I'm not going to be able to read through all of this in a week. Not only am I a very slow reader, but it's also not just reading. It's, it's like implementing and playing around with and things of that nature. So 
I'm going to read through all of this and run through, you know, hello world, of course. And then um, I'm going to read this because I don't know what the heck cargo is. Cargo is Rust build system and package manager. Okay. So I'm going to have to read through that and create a project with cargo and do all of this. Then I'll go through the first few sections here, programming a guessing game, common programming concepts, understanding ownership, and maybe a few things down here like well, maybe this, because I don't know what the heck a crate is. A crate is the smallest amount of code that the Rust compiler considers at a time. Okay, so yeah, I'll run through as much of this as possible as I see fit, maybe, okay, how do you write automated tests? You know, I'll kind of skim through it and see what I think will be really applicable, at least for the basics, and then I'll hop over into Rust by example. And I'll go through as many of these as possible, uh, as it holds my hand as I learn all of these things, and then I'll be ready to build a CLI tool or something along those lines. Uh, I'm not sure what yet, but I'll figure something out. Or maybe I'll rebuild something that I've already built in another language. I've always liked doing that because that way I don't have to worry about all of the semantics of a particular project or tool that I have to learn and build. I can focus solely on learning the programming language, but that's not really as fun. I really want to build a CLI tool, so that's probably what I'll do. So that's my plan to learn Rust, uh, or at least as much as I can learn in a week. All to prepare for Advent of Code, which will continue my learning process of Rust. So, cool. I'm looking forward to it. But also, that's not the only change I'm making to my dev environment, or whatever you want to call it. To my stack. Well, maybe to my stack. But I'm also changing my dev environment or at least testing things out to see what I like over the next month or so. First of all, I'll be hopping back over to coding in Linux. Oh, I should have had this ready, huh? Setting up this little fella, this little fella right here, the Mini MSA1 Workstation. And no, Mini's form is not sponsored in this video. Micro Center is where I got this. And as someone who's only purchased from Micro Center online, like most of what is in this the custom build right here, including the water cooling system and all the components, going to the store for the first time was insane. My closest store is in Fairfax, Virginia, which is like four hours away from where I live, which that's kind of why I haven't been in person, but it was sick. And it was like, it was like a kid in a candy store. They had an entire section full of custom PC parts, an entire laptop section, an entire desktop section, uh, an entire Apple and TV section, an entire maker stem section, which I really like that. Cause as you know, I like to build contraptions that utilize computer vision to shoot me in the face or feed me coffee. If you've seen those videos, you know what I'm talking about. But they also have anything else you could think of from cables to this to that, everything, including a capture card, including this HDMI cable, and including KVM switches. I'll get to that in a second regarding the entire setup. But if you have, if you're lucky enough to have one near you, I'd highly recommend going to it. It's an experience. If not, eh, well, go online. Oh, and I forgot to mention Micro Center's Black Friday deal. They're having a Black Friday deal. Uh, the link to everything will be in the description, but there's going to be two other links down there. So they're going to have really good deals up to $400 off on their Qualcomm powered Microsoft surfaces. Qualcomm is always a hard word for me to say. Or if you're looking to build a PC like this one, check out their AMD bundles like this one right here, the AMD Ryzen 5 7600 X3D bundle. Again, there will be links to the Micro Center's Black Friday deals in the description. So check all of those out and strike while the iron's hot. But if you have have a micro center near you again highly recommended so yeah but what i picked up is what you just saw this msa1 the elgato 4k pro capture card the hdmi cable and the kvm switch as well as a usb switch or hub or something i don't know it, it's what they recommended based on what i wanted to do because i didn't know what I, i've never done kvm switch stuff so they're a huge help in you know kind of figuring things out for me. And why did I get all of that stuff? Well, if you've been following me for a while, you know that my last setup was dual booting Windows and Arch Linux on this right here. And I would code on Arch Linux, but then I would need Windows for all of my video stuff, for all of my Adobe stuff, because I can never get it to work properly on any Linux distro with Wine or whatever. And even before that, what I did is I ran a Windows machine for work and then ran a virtual machine with Ubuntu on that for my development environment. But I think I figured out the best way to go about it. See, this mini PC, mini workstation, 
whatever they call it, the MSA1 is going to be running Linux. Now, I've thought of, do I want to put Arch back on it? Uh, custom Rice, whatever. Do I want to put Ubuntu on it? It's very simple. Or do I want to try something that has been piquing my interest lately? And that's where I think I'm going to go with it. Nix OS. I've been doing a little bit of research on it. Nix means like five different things. But Nix OS, I think that's what I'm leaning towards on that for coding. It seems fun. I want to give it a shot. My current PC here will continue to run Windows for all my stuff. And I'll hook up using that capture card, this computer to that computer, so I can record everything that's going on on that computer, me coding and things of that nature. So that way all of my video stuff is still on Windows and I can get back to coding on Linux. Although I, I will say WSL2 has been treating me right, but mm, it's still not the same. But I'll do all of that in a future video. I still got to figure out all the kinks and, and work all that out because I'm not exactly sure how I want to go about it. I have other monitors. Do I want to have all dedicated monitors? Do I want to be able to switch? That's just some things I have to figure out. So again, if you have any recommendations, you're familiar with this type of setup, a dual PC setup, I'm all ears. Let me know, please. A few more changes I'm going to try out. As much as I hate to say it, as much as I have loved over the past years and years and years crapping on Vim users, it's one of my favorite pastimes, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going over to the dark side. I don't recall if I've ever even touched Vim. Well, no, that's not true. I have touched Vim maybe a handful of times, but when I say touch Vim, I really mean touch Vim because every single time I end up on this page. Um, yeah. So, which that obviously means I, I've never learned it at all. I did use Emacs a bit back in college, but um, that's... Not exactly the same. It, that's the closest thing I got. So uh, anyway, here's what I'm thinking. Because I, 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 may, I may be taking a different approach. If you have a different recommendation, let me know. And that is, since I am currently a VS Code user, I think I'm just going to roll with my current setup and just add Vim motions to VS Code and learn while I do my regular work. And then, you know, when outside of that regular work, I would like to practice and things of that nature. And then once I have like a basic understanding of Vim motions, I'll move over to NeoVim. I think that would be the best option for someone like me. I'll be able to, you know, use it, install some of the basic plugins, use it some more, make sure I understand exactly what plugin does what, add this one here, take this one out here, you know, just make it my own. Again, this is my first foray into the world of Vim, and I blame the Prime Gen. Oh my God! Because I'll sit here and work, and you know, I'll highlight this text to delete it, and then come over here and do a keyword search, and then click over on this this file up here to navigate, or maybe over here, and then I'll watch the Prime Gen, and you know, he's just over here, just like, and he does everything that I just did in a fraction of the time. I want to do that, so. I figured I'd give it a shot. I also find his keyboard interesting. It's one of those split keyboards for ergonomics or whatever. I've always hated the look of them. I've never been interested in ever using one, even after watching his stream. You know, again, just still never been interested until a Reddit ad got me. This Reddit ad, for a matter of fact, the one for the unicorn. And when I saw it, I was just looking at it like, man, that's a pretty keyboard. And then I kept looking at it like, wait a second. Eh. There ain't no numbers on there. How do they type the numbers? Do they have an extra keyboard? Like what's going on? And that led me down the rabbit hole that is 40% keyboards. Look, I, I'm, again, I'm familiar with like the 80%. That's what I use now. I like it. But then I was looking at 40%, like how do they do all these things? And there's all of these different layers, kind of similar to like how we have our shift layer and our control layer and things of that nature. There's different layouts for doing different things. Maybe their windows key will actually work. Unlike mine, every single I Equinox, I Q Unix is how it's spelled. Keyboard that I've used, which is two. The Windows key is completely busted after uh, maybe a month. So that's annoying, but I do like the form factor. It seems like the perfect size for me. And again, I've never been a fan of split keyboards. However, if I am considering, well, I'm actually going to try to go the route of stripping down my code editor from VS Code to NeoVim, I'm sure I'll have plenty of plugins and things of that nature, but I'm doing all of that to improve efficiency, as well as you know, I think it would be a little bit more enjoyable. How do I know that stripping down my keyboard from an 80% to a 40%
won't have the same result. So I said to myself, might as well give it a try. Uh, see if I like it or not, and then I can make a decision from there. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a shot and see if I like it, but I'm gonna give it a real college try. But last, not first. So I'm going to learn Rust over the next week. Uh, everything I can about learning Rust over the next week. And then I'm going to use Rust and Advent of Code, which is going to continue my learning. I'm going to simultaneously set up the mini workstation PC with the Nix OS, just the basics from Micro Center, and then I'll get it all set up for programming at least v1 because i know as i use it i'm going to like this not like that change this change that that's kind of the whole point to make the setup perfect for me and then i'm going to learn vim motions in vs code and then do the same with neo vim as i'm doing with nix os get like a basic setup going for what people recommend adding a plugin here and there at a time so i can really see the actual full potential of it and exactly what it does then you know learn things on the fly and make it perfect for me or I'll do Vim motions and NeoVim at the same time. I'm seriously looking to y'all for some guidance here because I kind of want to do that route. I kind of do, but I feel like the other may make more sense, but maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. And then I'll get the 40% keyboard, replace the 80%, you know, throw it in the trash can, just kidding my closet because I'll probably revert back to it, but let's hope that I don't. I'll get it all set up, my layers, my layouts, for whatever I do. And then as I use it, I'll learn everything I can to make it as optimal as possible. And again, perfect for me. And of course, since I'm a YouTuber, I'm gonna be making videos of every single piece of this process along the way, just documenting my journey and what I do. I'm really looking forward to 